Fajr Rashka, DRL game. Welcome back. Uh, welcome to my world, actually. It's pouring rain. It's kind of, it's kind of pouring, isn't it? <laughs> should have brought our jackets. We should have brought our jackets. Anyway, it's that time of year again. The cold weather is almost upon us. And before we know it, we'll be facing things like frost, hail, and dare oh, we say, no. Martin, a bit of schnock that. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, how can we make sure our car is road ready? Well, Mick Crane from Mick's Garage joins us now to show us just how. Good to see you. I so you brought the weather with you? Well, it's actually it's, it's lovely and mild anyway. It's, 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 it's mild. It's a little bit of rain is no it harm. Is anyway, we're going to go around the car. What have you got for us? What yeah, the so look, at the important thing is when you're driving in winter is making absolutely sure that you don't do, that you do the simple things right. And the simple things right are making sure you can see through your windscreen, making sure that your tyres are pumped under the right pressure, make sure your battery is good to go and make sure that you're not just going to get caught on the side of the road. And you see so many people, you know, that are driving, you know, coming out of driveways and their car is frosted up and it takes them about a couple of miles now to get rid of that. All of those really simple things to get right. Yeah, okay. like, when is the best time of year to get your car service, Mick, by the way? It's, you should have your car service on your regular intervals, regular. not just the time of year. Don't wait till winter, because the problem is all garages are busy at that point in time. Get it done early. Yeah, and your garage will always say, after X amount of uh, kilometres, you Hop need in. to bring the car. Yeah, and you should, and you should, an really, you should really follow the manufacturer's warranty from okay. that point. You've mentioned frost. Rain is also a big problem. Uh, last Friday, we had rain that made visibility zilch Correct. for so many of us. But there are ways and means of keeping the rain off our windscreens, there, aside from the wipers. There are, there are. Now, obviously, you mentioned wipers there. We'll start with wipers. I mean, so, for example, you have wipers here. The main, the most important thing is make sure your wipers are fit for purpose, make sure the rubber is good on the wipers, and make sure it's clean in your full windscreen. But there is another thing we can do then. So you have the likes of these rain products, for example, that when you spray them on the windscreen here, so we'll do, if we can do a very quick demo, so that. you've already sprayed right. this I've already, rain repellent? I've already pre-baked this. I've, I've pre sprayed some okay. repellent on the windscreen. So when you pour the water on, you can see how easily that falls away. So ah. sometimes, you, you know, water on a windscreen, it's really just as difficult, particularly with poor wipers or whatever, to get it off the car. But it's really, really important. The likes of this product really helps to, well, to, get, the, to get it away. Yeah. Uh, great. Mick, you mentioned uh, temperatures beginning to dip as well. The winter ice kit. Yeah, winter ice kit is very, very important. Right, you have an antifreeze to make sure that your windscreen wash isn't freezing, right? So that's very, very important to keep that right. Then you have uh, the likes of the gummy fledge, right? Keeps the rubbers on your, on your wipers soft, but also the rubbers around the doors. Too many times, you know, you get little breezes coming in or little drafts coming in. So that keeps your rubber soft around the door and keeps that seal, seal uh, good. But then, of course, it's not just a simple spray around the around a simple spray, simple spray around the rubbers. It really keeps your rubber soft. I mean, like uh, part of the problem is in, in summertime, you can have lots of dry days where these things get cracked. Right. You've really got to just look after your car. I mean, your car, people, your car costs a lot of money. So actually spend a few quid to keep it going right and keep it, uh, it you know, it, it extends the life of the car. Yeah. Um, now, I love this one. The heated seat pads. <laughs> the heated we seat all pads. love them. Yeah. So the heated seat pad. Warm, lads. <laughs> yeah. The heated seat pad. Now, this is an electric car. So lots of electric cars don't need them because electric cars have instant heated seats, right? But in lots of diesels and, and petrols, as we know, it takes a long time to get your, your car heated up. So this heated seat here that I've already installed in the car, right? So you can see it here, right? It just literally plugs into your normal cigarette lighter and it's instant heat you know, on the way to school in the morning. Sometimes it's just, you see people sitting with their cars running in the driveway to get the car heated up. This is just a way to speed up the process. Yeah, OK, great. Nice, nice, nice if, if you're warm, your rear end is nice and toasty, <laughs> you're going to be happy. You're, you're going to be happy. You're going to be happy. Everybody, and the kid, particularly the kids on the way to school, will be happy with that. Do you have heated seats, Martin? Yeah, I have heated seats and heated steering wheels. But, you know, hey, not what? everybody has that. You have a heated steering wheel? Yeah. Ass chops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't need gloves then. But sometimes you do need gloves because you might have to step outside your car because there are bits that need to be done. Sometimes sometimes you've got to step outside the car. For example, if you get a puncture or if yeah. you get any of those type of things, you may not be able to use your heated seats and your, your, <laughs> your fancy heated steering wheel all the time. So you have the likes of a, a for, for tyres, for example, you may well have to pump your tyres. So if you're driving a long journey, so I'm going to Mayo at the weekend, you know, if you get caught halfway, what do you do? I mean, you've got to drive flat or you can say, well, hang on a second. We have That's one of these good. in the car. We can pump this up, right? And we can drive safely. So it's really important to keep your tyres at exactly the right pressure because it improves fuel economy and it improves the life of your tyres and it improves your braking distance and all of those simple things. OK, this thing, I used to use one of these only last week. I came what out of here you? last Friday after the show had finished and one of my tyres was flat. 
and I had one of these in the boot. Within a couple of minutes, I was driving. Again. Oh, it, it, they're incredible. They're incredible because what it does is, look, you still have to get your puncture fixed, but it actually gives you an opportunity to get to the garage to get that done. It and plugs it, into your cigarette lighter. plugs into your cigarette lighter and off, off you go. Plugs in, they're, they're amazing. Now, okay. you also have the little pump gun there as well. Take us through yeah. that one, Mick. So, so the pump gun again, it's just, another, it's just another version of this. It's just a lighter weight version of this. So it's really, really handy device. But you can see how small they are. They don't take up a lot of room in your car. And it's just very, very handy to have yeah, those. Yeah. Simple little thing. Um, I love this, the hairdryer. The hairdryer. Well, you guys will need it a lot more than I, I will, right? <laughs> Martin needs it. <us. laughs> so, so the hairdryer here, right? Again, you know, these are sort of gimmicky little things. But to have in the car, right, they're very, very useful. Again, a I, I, it's a hairdryer. Oh, it's a hair dryer. Oh, it's, it's a, a hair dryer. One. It's a little foldable hair dryer. Yeah, you could so, do with that now in the morning. So, so very <laughs> useful. Again, I don't have an awful lot of use for this for obvious reasons, but it's they're a really, really. But hang good on, seller. hang on. We're not just talking about grooming yourself, uh, you know, while you're sitting in traffic. Well, what else you would do with a hair dryer? Getting the frost off your windscreen. Oh, you know right. what? That plugs in to your cigarette lighter again. While the husband is out fixing the puncture using this device, you know, we have others in the car doing their hair, you know? But, but that, would, that would get the frost off your windscreen that little bit quicker. Well, well, that's not what that one is for. I but know that's not what it's for, but, but that's what I'd be using thing, it for. It does exactly that, right? Yeah. So we have these fans, right, moving on to exactly to that. Yeah. So that's exactly what these fans do. Again, you have electric or you have uh, electric cars, don't need this because they've inst got instant heat. Okay. But you have diesel and petrol cars, that require, you know, a lot of heating up before they will defrost your windscreen and all of that. This really helps the process. It's just an electric heater that plugs into your car and it just from the inside and it just defrosts your windscreen. So That's very, great, very useful. I love that. But if you get into a spot of trouble, Mick, you have the ultra safe jump starter there, I see it in front of us. Correct, yeah. So the jump starters, again, you know, you have them in the car. Uh, you know, you may never have to use them, but when you do, they're really worth their weight in gold. So these jump starters are not like the jump starters of old. I mean, you have jump starters many years ago that would have been the size of a wheelbarrow to bring. These are actually incredible and they're getting smaller all the time. They're nearly getting to the size of a mobile phone and they're very, very useful to have in the car. And where do you plug the other side into? Which the, the, uh, all you do is you plug it in, that's it. So there's a charging cable to charge it via USB yeah. here. And then you just plug this onto the and battery. That's it. That's it. Oh, so you just charge, charge up the battery. Charge this up. This car. is the battery unit. You charge ah, that up. That's a great right? advantage. And you can charge that up at home. But it's just incredible. And even if it's not helping out yourself, you may help out somebody else that's stuck on the road. Uh, oh, it, absolutely amazing. And if if you can't afford one of them, you can get your regular jump leads. You can but get your you regular. Then you need somebody else to give you a lead on a battery. You can get your push, regular jump push leads Push up a well. hill or down a hill. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What, absolutely. What, what, the problem with jump leads, though, is batteries are not as easy to get to in lots of cars mm. as they used to be. Sometimes they're hidden in the boot in BMWs and things like that. So, 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 it's, um, so the main thing is just make sure your battery is maintained at all times. OK. If you are in a situation where you have broken down, you don't have one of these machines to get the thing going again, you're waiting for someone to come and rescue you, you are going to need your mobile device. And there's plenty of things you can get to charge your phone that you just literally lie them on. That's exactly right. So there is, there is a triangle here as well. So a triangle is very important in the car. If you are broken down, just put the triangle on the road. It's a high visibility thing and it just lets people know that we have that there, right? But then you have all sorts of devices like these. These are charge banks, but they're also hand warmers, right? So ah, their stop, beauty of them is, yeah, oh, they're, they're really? great. They're really great. So, I mean, they're, they're, you know, you can hold them in your hand and they're, they, they keep your hands warm, yeah. but they also charge your phone as well. So it is really important, as you said, Martin, if you're broken down, you need to make sure that you're not losing power and in your just phone. Just lastly, because we are running out of time, should we encounter, and we will, it's winter time that's coming, uh, snow and ice, the tyre socks. The tyre socks are the most amazing thing for snow and ice, right? I mean, you know, we, we didn't have that much snow over the past couple of years. I think the last time we had a proper snow storm was about 10, 12 years ago. But when you get stuck, these things are amazing. They're like fa they're a fabric product that go in your tyres and they will bring you absolutely anywhere. They're you just obviously incredible. missed the beast from the east <laughs> about yeah. four years ago, yeah, five yeah. years ago. Yeah. That wasn't as bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm sold on the that. hairdryer, Martin. You're still on the hairdryer. <laughs> Mick, great to see you. It great always you, is. Thank you, Mick. We're now car ready and car safe uh, for the winter months ahead. For more from Mick, check out his website, mixgarage.com. All right.